Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 211 and we're going to be talking about Lando. So you might be wondering what is Lando? Well it's essentially a really cool local development environment that makes it very easy to spin up Drupal websites. And it's not just Drupal, but Drupal is uh, what we're going to be using in this example. So the first thing is let's go ahead and look at some of the documentation on Lando. So if we go over here, uh, you can actually see it on GitHub at github.com slash Lando slash Lando. And this is uh, where you're actually going to get uh, a lot of information about what it is, the code base, it's all here. And it's built on top of Docker. So if you go to the actual site that it lists, there's uh, a lot of information about it. But we're going to go to the installing page. Installing in this can be a little tricky, and I'm going to tell you about some of the gotchas that I ran into uh, as we go through this but you can install it on Mac, Windows, or Linux and you'll need Docker and it, it has some pretty good documentation but it does bounce you around to a number of different uh, places as you're going through it so just uh, you're gonna have to kind of follow along and uh, jump back and forth especially if you're using uh, Linux which is what I was using in this example which had a few uh, small issues but we got through it and so let's go ahead and assuming you get it installed you're going to want to jump into the command line and you're going to simply, if you run just Lando, it's going to tell you all the different commands that you have. We're going to use a number of these. We're not going, going to go through all of them, but we'll go through some of them. The first thing you do need, though, is if you just want to spin up a Drupal 8 website, you're going to need to uh, download the code base for Drupal 8. So I'm going to go out to the Drupal website, and you can see this URL here. It actually gives you the instructions for using git to pull down the 8.6.x branch of Drupal. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in. And this is going to create a Drupal directory. It's going to pull down all the code and then we're going to be able to use Lando to actually get this thing set up. So it's going to take a, a few seconds here while it goes through and pulls everything down. Now one of the important things to realize is this is pulling down the code base Lando is then going to set up uh, a Docker container. So you'll hear, uh, if you're using Docker, you, it's called containers rather than VMs or virtual machines. It's a little bit different technology. Containers are a little bit more lightweight than a virtual machine. So typically it's, a, uh, it's much faster. But again, uh, it works very similar to how if you've used Vagrant or anything like that. It's just the technology behind it is a little bit different in how it's structured. So let's go ahead and if I look at this directory you can see I have a Drupal directory here and if we examine this you can see it has your normal uh, Drupal code base here so we have the index.php we have a sites folder we have a modules folder a themes folder all that you would expect to see all we need to do to get started is do lando init and it's going to ask us a few questions the first is what recipe do you want to use and you can see there are a ton of recipes here we're going to start with just Drupal 8, and then I'm also going to show you how to integrate this with Pantheon, which is pretty cool. So we'll start with Drupal 8. It's going to ask, what is the web root? If you don't have uh, the web root at the base, you might have it in another subfolder. It's always going to be where the index.php is. So in this case, it's just in our base directory. We can just use that. What do we want to call it? I'm just going to call it d8site. Hit enter there. And it gives us uh, some motivational messages along the way, which is nice. But it also gives you some details about what it did. All we need to do now is just run lando start. And that's going to start the process of building this uh, container for us. Now, on my specific uh, install, I'm going to get an error. You shouldn't get this, but it says it has to do with installing Drush. Because what Lando does is it installs Drupal Console, installs Drush, and Composer all within your Lando container, or your Docker container. So with my specific version of Linux, there's a little bit of a bug. I do have a workaround where I've, I can get it to work, but if you're using Mac or Windows, you should be okay. You shouldn't have to worry about that specific error message. If you're using uh, Linux, you might run into it, but again, they are working on it, so hopefully it will be fixed in future versions of Lando. 
One other thing, if you're using Windows, you will need to be using, and specifically Windows 10, you will need to be using Windows 10 Pro, just so you know. Um, I do have a Windows machine as well, and I have Windows 10 Home, which won't work because it doesn't have um, all the things it needs in order to build these containers. It's just That's another potential gotcha if you are on a Windows operating system. You will need Windows 10 Pro. So this is pretty cool. It does take a while for the database service to jump up and get started, but then boom shakalaka, as it says here, we got it started. And now it gives you these URLs. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this URL because it's not quite ready yet. If you notice, if you look in the Drupal directory, there's no vendor folder. We need that vendors folder because that is has Symfony, it has a lot of other components that make Drupal work. It's very simple on how to do that though. We just run Lando Composer install. And again, within this Lando instance, we have access to Composer. That means we can run any Composer commands we want. So this is gonna take a little while for it to pull down all these dependencies using Composer. But as you can see, it's pretty powerful. You can do the same with Drush. It's just Lando Drush or uh, the same with Drupal Console. So it's very uh, simple to run these things uh, specifically on this website. So now I'm going to jump back and I'm going to paste in that URL. And this should get me to the install page. So it doesn't install Drupal for you. You still have to go through those steps, but it's pretty simple. There's only one gotcha in this section that you might need to uh, consider. And that is with what to put in for the database info, because it's not necessarily intuitive in what you would do there. In order to get this information, you can just go Lando info, and it's going to give you a bunch of different information about uh, this Lando instance, specifically the database. You can see it gives you the host name, which is just database, and the user, password, and the actual database is Drupal 8. So I'm just going to copy this, fill this in. The, the database name, the username, and the password are all Drupal 8, and the host is database. So I can go ahead and hit enter or click the save and continue button and it's going to bring us to the next step. And this will take a little bit of time to set this up. And from there on um, out it's all uh, pretty standard stuff. So we're not going to go through any additional uh, information here or th these steps because once you get to the end here you, you'll have your Drupal site it'll be up and running. So I'm going to actually just run Lando stop and I'm gonna then go back to my main directory and we're gonna do it again but we're gonna use Pantheon this time and this is really cool so this one's important if you you already need to have a Pantheon account again Pantheon is free if you don't have a production website so for development and testing it's completely free I recommend you try it I use it on many of my sites uh, one important thing you'll have to do with Pantheon is when you have your account, you're going to need to go into your account settings. Let's see if I can get into my account here. And there's something called machine tokens. So the very first time, you'll have to create a machine token in order for you to set this up. But once you do, uh, once you have that machine token, you will be able to use that uh, to basically connect Lando to your Pantheon site. So grab that machine token. It's just a long string you're going to need. So hang on to that. Don't lose it. And you'll also want to make sure that your website's in Git mode. If I go to this development website, you can see it's a, just a very simple D8 site. Uh, nothing's been changed. The only thing I think I did was uh, turn off CSS and JavaScript uh, compression and a few other things. But it's basically a, just a normal base install D8 site. So if we go back to here, I'm going to go ahead and make a directory. I'm just going to call it Pantheon. I'm going to go into that directory and this is pretty simple. I just do Lando init Pantheon. And first it's going to ask you to enter or paste in that token. If you already have pasted it in, it saves it so you don't have to do it twice. I'm going to grab my account I can select what site do I want. Well, I want this Drupal 8 test site that I have working. And this is going to do a number of things. It's going to pull down 
the code base from Pantheon. It's going to uh, basically get it all set up for us so we can then run Lando start to spin up this container. All right, so there we go. So again, all we need to do is just run Lando start. Make sure we're, we're in our folder. And it's going to go ahead and build this, land, uh, this Lando instance for us so we can access our Pantheon site locally. So this is really cool because there are some tools that help you push and pull database you know, files, code base between the two. Uh, in, between your local and your actual Pantheon dev site. So it's very powerful because if you're develop if you've ever been developing websites, a lot of, a lot of people you may have used WAMP in the past, you may have used you know LAMP stack, you may have used some, you know XAMP if you're on Windows. There's all different types of tools that you maybe had to install and configure and you never knew if your environment was the same test environment as someone you maybe were working with. So what this allows you to do is with uh, Lando, you can have a consolidated environment where you know that your environment's the same as another uh, employee or another developer that's working on the project. So it removes a lot of those things where you think, well, it worked on you know, my dev, why doesn't it work on yours? So this helps with that. And it's all powered um, through this Lando.yaml or .yml file. So we're going to go ahead and look at that file when this is done here so we can see what that uh, Lando file looks like or that config file that helps uh, when this you first run Lando start that config file is used to help build this Lando instance for you. So again it's going to take a little while for the database to spin up but once it does it should be working and uh, it won't quite be perfect yet and I'll show you why but before we do, let's go ahead and just look in this directory here. So it is a hidden file, this .lando.yaml or .yml. Let's go ahead and just look at that quickly. You can see there's not much to it. It's the name, the specific recipe you're using, some configuration information, and you can read up on what this uh, lando.yaml file can be used for. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with it. It's not just, uh, you know, we're looking at the very basic uh, instance of it. You can do a lot more with it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to go to this website, and it's not going to work yet, but let's go ahead and just go to the site here. And you're going to say, okay, well, it's not quite working yet, so... Why is it asking me to install when I go to the Pantheon version and it's already installed? Well, that's because we don't have the database yet. All we need to do is do Lando pull. And it's going to ask, where do I want to pull the code from? Well, we don't want to pull the code because we already have the code pulled down. And you, you really don't want to be pulling code this way because you want to use Git for that. So you want to use Git to push your code up. You don't want to use this necessarily Lando push or Lando pull. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm going to go ahead and select none. We do want to pull the database from development, and you could see I could pull the database straight from live if I wanted to, if I had a live site. And lastly, let's pull the files from dev as well. It's going to go ahead and create that database, create the file system, or pull down all the, uh, all the different files that makes uh, maybe any file uploads, anything like that's going to get pulled down. You do notice there is a PHP error. Uh, that has to do with PHP 7.2 causing some errors. You can ignore it. Um, it's another thing that is being worked on and it will be fixed in the future. But again, it's not going to cause any issues in this case. So let's let this run. It should be just about done. And then you'll notice once we're done here, if I refresh the page, it's going to give me the exact same looking site that I had on the development version of the Pantheon site. So this is really cool. You can then do your local development. You can uh, change your code, push it up through Git to the dev site, and then you can have anyone on your team do that same thing. So everyone has their own local development environment. You're not competing with each other. And you, then you can, of course, kind of consolidate it in that 
uh, Pantheon dev environment. And you can do all kinds of uh, much more complex work workflows with some continuous integration servers, some uh, different testing services. There's a lot you can do. This is really the really basic entry level. One other thing to keep in mind about that Lando YAML file is you want to commit that to your uh, Git repository. Because that way, if I commit my Lando file up, and then you as a developer on my team pull it down, you can use that to create a, the same environment. So we'll, you'll be testing the same way that I'll be testing. So this poll has been completed. If I go back to this now, don't want to go to the install page, let's just go to the home page. You will see, you know, cross our fingers, it should look exactly the same as this. Obviously I'm not logged in, but I could go ahead and log in and it would be exactly the same. That's it for today on the Daily Dust Drupal. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, check out my Patreon page. And if you have any questions on this, uh, let me know. We'll see you next time. Bye.